In this Getting Started video, we'll go over the steps on how to set up your new Sage TimeSlips Go account. TimeSlips Go is the new cloud-native replacement for Sage TimeSlips eCenter. As a new user, you should have received an activation onboarding email that contains a link to set up your new TimeSlips Go login. If you haven't, please contact TimeSlips support using the chat function within TimeSlips Premium before proceeding. Let's get started setting up your TimeSlips Go logins. Locate your TimeSlips Go activation email that is from the Sage Solutions Administrator. Before clicking on anything, make sure you are not currently logged in to any Sage ID product. If you are, please log out first before activating this new service. In the Activate Your Service email, click on the Getting Started button. This will launch your default browser window and you should be presented with a Create Your Account screen. Your email address is already backfilled, but complete all other fields with the correct information and click Sign Up. You'll be prompted to check your email for a six-digit verification code. Let's copy and paste this code and click Continue. This next step is required for an additional layer of security called two-factor authentication. This will require to use either a third-party authenticator service, such as Microsoft or Google, or if you choose, you can use the text by phone feature. In this video, we'll use the Microsoft Authenticator app. During this process, please don't hit the back button in your browser at any step. Doing so could cause an issue with completing this process. Let's pull up Microsoft Authenticator. We're going to click on Set Up Two-Factor Authentication. In your Microsoft Authenticator, click Add Account and choose Other Account. If this was a real device, you would be able to scan the QR code on your computer screen. But since this is a simulation, we're going to choose the option for Enter Code Manually. And in this example, we're just going to choose Cannot Scan the QR Code, which gives us the secret key. Copy this key and paste it here. Give this an account name. Now normally, if you were using the QR code method, it would backfill the account name with Sage Time Slips Go. Now hit Finish, and the account has been successfully added. In this example, Sage ID wants a six-digit code, so we're going to click on this to get the code. This code is a rolling 30-second code, so sometimes you may click in here and it will be counting down from two or one because this number is always changing. And that's okay. If it changes on you, just wait for it to change so that you don't have to rush. And just like now, it's counting down to code changes. Now we have time to copy and paste. Click Continue. Let's say you lose your device or change phone numbers and you no longer have access to the authenticator service to get into your Sage account. This is why Setup creates a recovery code. It's best practice to copy this recovery code and save it somewhere like a text file, a special place, to keep it safe. So, anytime you need to reference that code in the future, you can simply pull up this recovery code to access your account and set up the authenticator again. For now, I'm going to choose I have saved my recovery code and click Continue. With Sage ID, once you're authorized, that authorization is good for 30 days. You won't be asked for or prompted to enter in your code again during that 30 days unless you change browsers or devices. After 30 days, even on the same device, you'll be prompted to use the authenticator again to access your account. Click Continue. We recommend you read your subscription agreement. Then scroll all the way down to the bottom and click I have read and accept the terms to proceed. And we're in. This is the Sage Time Slips Go welcome screen. It's the new interface for Time Slips Go. Let's go over a few key areas. In the upper right corner of your screen, you'll see a Timekeeper Initials menu button. Click on this button to view additional options. Let's talk through some important options in Time Slips Go, including user management, the Go desktop link, and security. The first user on your team to log in will be considered the administrator for your Time Slips Go account. Only administrators have the permissions view and manage the Go Desktop link, user management, and security options. When you create additional logins for your new timekeepers, you'll need to understand how to mark other logins with rights to be an administrator or have user management ability. First, let's review the different options and settings in Sage Time Slips Go. 
The user management option is unique. It's controlled solely by one specific setting on its own. The Go Desktop link and the security options are controlled by the administrator setting in your user management portal. Let's click on user management, which is going to launch a new browser. Since we're already logged in, the app brings us to the user portal for our account. Click on create user, then enter the user's details. In the access area, this user currently has no access to Time Slips Go or Sage User Management. Let's grant them access to Time Slips Go by clicking the checkbox next to Sage Time Slips Go. The user hasn't logged in yet to activate, so they aren't showing as active. As soon as that happens and this refreshes, you would see a check mark there. Because we didn't grant them permissions to the user management option, they do not have a check mark here. Now let's talk about being an administrator. In Time Slips Go, there are menu options for the Go Desktop link and security. The Go Desktop link is important because it's a unique code to link to your Time Slips Go account database in Sage Time Slips Premium. So when you click on this, it pulls up a unique code for your account. And this is how Sage knows to link your Time Slips Premium database to your account. As an administrator, you have the ability to assign administrative privileges to other users. Since standard users shouldn't have access to these settings, it's important to limit their permissions and not grant them administrator status. The same principle applies to security settings. Standard users shouldn't have administrative control over security options either. Next, let's take a look at user management and see where you define someone as an administrator. Go to Options, select Administrators, and here you can see there's only a check mark next to our first time keeper's login. If you want to make other users an administrator, just put a check mark here and hit Save. We'll cover the importance of limiting those who are admins for your company a little later in this video. If an admin leaves the company, this is where you'd remove their admin role. Just click the check mark and hit Save. Note. Sometimes the admin setting can have a slight delay. It should be pretty instant, but in some cases, we have seen it take up to two hours to take effect. If you see it take any longer than two hours, please contact Time Slips Go Support and report the issue. Let's move on to linking your Time Slips Premium database with your new Time Slips Go account and uploading your data. First, you need to make sure you have installed the latest version of Time Slips Premium. If you are not sure, then in Time Slips Premium, navigate to Help, Support, and Downloads and Updates. If you are not on the latest update, please install it prior to starting your Sage Time Slips Go migration, or have whoever is in charge of your Time Slips Premium management install the update. This demo assumes you're on the most recent update. If you navigate to the Special menu, you'll see two options at the bottom. The first one is for the legacy eCenter application, which is going away and the other is for the new Sage Time Slips Go, which is the replacement for eCenter. If you're an existing eCenter customer that is migrating to Time Slips Go, you'll need to make sure you download all of your slips from eCenter first. If you have any existing slips currently in eCenter and you attempt to set up Time Slips Go, you'll be presented with a message advising you to mark any and all slips as complete and download them, just like this. For demo purposes, let's assume you have an eCenter account that is linked to this database, and if you try to set up Time Slips Go, it will tell you you can't do that because you still have slips that need to be marked completed and downloaded. So for the purpose of this demo, I went ahead and deleted my slips in eCenter so I no longer see the warning. Now we'll navigate to Special and Time Slips Go eCenter Replacement. And here, now that it does not detect any slips in eCenter, it will ask for your account token, which is the Go Desktop link. Enter into Sage Time Slips Go to your Timekeeper Initials menu and down to the Go Desktop link and copy and paste your account token. There's also a little shortcut right here to just copy that to your clipboard. Click OK. Pass your account token into the Time Slips Go setup window in Time Slips Premium. Now we can click the Save and Test Connection link in Step 4. The system is telling us that you're now linked between Time Slips Premium and Time Slips Go with your main login. And it's telling us that we need to perform an initial first transfer. Click Done. 
Your Time Slips Go dashboard should now be displayed. There are several sections, so let's start with the Logins section. This section will display all of your Time Slips Go logins. Currently, none of these logins are linked to a timekeeper. For the purpose of this demo, I'll activate the second login we created earlier on the back end so it appears in the logins list when I refresh. Notice how both of the logins are unassigned. So you've linked your Time Slips Go account with your Time Slips Premium database. To create slips, you need to assign timekeepers to those logins. Right now, you have logins in Time Slips Go and you have timekeepers in Time Slips Premium. Navigate to Names, Timekeeper Info, and down to the field called Sage Time Slips Go Email. Here we'll enter an email for demo purposes called timeslipsgo plus testadmin at gmail.com and save this. Now go to another timekeeper and repeat this step by entering the email again. Save this and refresh the dashboard. So now these timekeepers have an indicator showing a green up arrow, indicating that your timekeepers are linked. However, they need to be uploaded along with your database that you're going to upload next. Under the Transfer menu, click the circle next to the Update Names and Settings and get ready to upload your database. Before we upload, some other areas in the dashboard to take note of are the Names section, which shows how many clients and activities are going to upload, and below that, the section for abbreviations, firm information, and slip restrictions. Green cloud icons will display when settings are being uploaded or synced. In this case, I have no abbreviations that are being uploaded, but I do have firm information and slip restriction settings that need to be uploaded to Time Slips Go. In this version of Time Slips Go, you'll need to upload the entire database. At this time, there's no option to filter out specific names for clients or activities. Let's click on the transfer button. When you click Transfer, you'll be presented with a report summary that you can choose to print. This will tell you everything that's happening. When you are ready to transfer, click Yes. Depending on the size of your database, it may take a few minutes to perform a full sync. Transfer completed successfully. Let's go ahead and click OK. Notice the dashboard now shows there are no names or changes to sync. Before, we had several areas that had values, and now everything is set to zero. If we were to go make a change to any name in the database, those names would register under Update. If you were to mark items to Close or Inactive, those would also get updated under the Remove section. We can leave this dashboard up. Let's go over to Time Slips Go and create some slips with the newly synced Time Slips Premium data. Click on New. Then you have the option to create a new time slip or new expense slip. We're going to create a new time slip. Notice our linked timekeeper appears in the timekeeper field. This isn't a field that you can change. Each timekeeper is linked to a login. So when you create slips, you can only create slips for yourself or the logged in timekeeper. For client, click the drop down and choose an activity in slip entry. It's important to note that any rates and rate rules that you've established in Time Slips Premium will come over and they will function as intended. So as you can see here, I'm creating a slip and it's already defaulting my rate to timekeeper level one with a value of eight. I'll go ahead and save this slip. Let's look at the slip list. Here we have our list of one slip. Currently, this slip is created and entered, but it is not marked complete. And just like in eCenter, if you want Time Slips Go to download a slip, it will need to be marked complete. You can choose to open up the slip, you can toggle it complete, or you can choose this icon to mark several slips as complete. In Time Slips Premium, let's refresh our dashboard. The dashboard shows that there's one slip marked not complete. As the administrator in Time Slips, occasionally you may see a slip that the timekeeper has not marked as complete, but you know you need this slip. You can choose to override and download the slip, even though it's not complete. Do this by navigating below to the Transfer section of the window and marking the circle next to Download All One Slips. Now in some cases, you may want to remove the incomplete slip. If you choose to override it, you can remove it. By default, the option to remove slips from Sage Time Slips Go After Download is unchecked. But if the timekeeper isn't aware that you're removing it, then you may want to leave this unchecked so the slip remains in Time Slips Premium for that timekeeper. 
Let's go ahead and transfer. Transfer completed. One slip downloaded. Click OK. Let's go look at our slip list. And there's our slip. Let's flip over to Time Slips Go. And as you can see, this slip remains. However, an icon of a cloud with a check mark is now displayed. That means that the slip has been transferred and synced. And when it's transferred and synced, no further changes can be made to that slip. In eCenter, once slips were downloaded, they weren't retained in the system. With Time Slips Go, we do retain slips for historical purposes. That's the end of this Getting Started video. Hopefully this video has been helpful in getting you started with Sage Time Slips Go, adding logins, creating logins, and syncing your database. If you have any questions, please contact Sage Time Slips Support using the Sage Support link in Time Slips Go to be connected with a support person. To do this without leaving Sage Time Slips, click on the Timekeeper menu, then Sage Support Live Chat. Thank you for watching.